Welcome everyone to part two of Project Going Deep. You've probably already noticed that the picture quality of this video might not be as good as it's been. That's because I'm back to my old Sony 35mm camera to film this. <sighs> There's a long story here. If you follow me on Facebook, you already know what happened. But in a nutshell, my GoPro, which I've been using as my main camera because it's small and nimble and I can get in stuff easy enough, screwed up somehow and unformatted my memory card. Which leads me to the unfortunate news that pretty much the entire install of my vent lines is lost to the woes of modern technology. I was just finishing up on the last vent line I had to, to do when the GoPro messed up. So unfortunately this is not going to be the detailed step-by-step -step instructional video I was hoping it to be. But I'm not going to let that get me down. Yes, it made me mad. I'm over it. I'm going to move on. And I can still give you an in-depth look at how I ran on my vent lines. Which will still be good enough to give you guys confidence, I'm hoping, to tackle this on your own. So we're going to start right here on the front and work our way around the machine. And I will show you how I ran all my vent lines. So here's all the hose you guys are going to need for this. For the front differential, this is quarter inch outside diameter point, uh, 7.0 inside diameter hose. For our radiator fan vent, we have 3 16ths outside diameter, 5 16ths inside diameter, and 3 16ths inch fuel line. And you want to make sure to get actual fuel line hose for your fuel tank vent because this regular hose will not hold up to the fumes of the gas you need the hose designated for fuel lines and then we have bits here too that you'll see what we need those for as I go over the install as far as how much hose you guys need that all depends on how you're going to run it for the differential I got a total of 20 feet of hose for it and you can see here this is what I have left over for the radiator fan vent I got six feet of it with only this much left over and for the fuel line, I got six feet of that again, and this is all I have left of that. So that works out pretty good to get six feet, six feet, and 20 feet. And of course, some ultra black for sealing around different things. So first off here, looking at the front of the machine, we have our front differential right here. Now all that's really involved with this was there was a little clip around here we took off, pulled the old line off, popped the new line on. I ran it up along here, zip tying it secure as I went. Come on, focus. Thank you. Along here. And I made sure to tuck it to run it in under all this trim because you are going to have your hood that goes back on top. I didn't want it to interfere. And then I basically just ran it up there. I drilled a small hole in the frame with a 5 16th drill bit, ran my tube up through to uh, close to the top and then sealed my hole up with ultra black RTV gaskets maker. Now besides the front differential line we have here in the front, we also have this line here, which this is the radiator fan vent. Now I didn't want to mess with this vent line where it hooks into the motor down there because I'm not exactly sure how it is hooked in and I didn't want to have to tear everything apart. So I did cheat here and I used a barb coupler here. But what I did, if you can see, let me see if I can get this to pick up on camera. Focus! Focus! Focus right here. Focus right here. Focus. There we go. I used the ultra black here on it too to seal that up. Because the more splices you have, the more chances you have to get water in. That's why I went ahead and replaced the whole line for the differential instead of just adding a piece to it. Because that's just one more place that could eventually allow water to get into. And then of course, like the differential vent, I ran it up under my trim and then in through a hole in the side of the roll cage, which then it runs up there near the top. Now this hose is a little bit bigger than the differential hose, so I had to use a 3 8 drill bit to make the hole for this. 
Now this here is how the fuel line was basically originally run. It just kind of looped up there a little bit and ran over here and this was down. It's nice and low. You can see how you can get water in that easily and contaminate your fuel. So, we got rid of that. And I got the new one run here. Again, I used the factory connector here and I did put a little ultra black around the end there just to extra insurance to seal that up. I ran it up, around, through the little frame member here, and then again drilled my hole, which for this hole I used a half inch drill bit, and then forced it up through the roll cage. Now you will run into a snag here where the frame members are bolted together. And I thought I was going to be Mr. Clever Pants, and unbolt those bolts, slide them out, stick my hose up through there, and then wiggle the bolts past the hose. Well, Honda had one over on me because these bolts just don't go through the thin frame that these holes the bolts go through are actually sleeved so taking the bolts out did absolutely nothing so basically what I did to get around those is I cut my hose at a pretty good angle and then just slowly worked it up and spun it as I kept pushing and then I eventually found the sweet spot and got it to slide up by it's just something that you're going to have to have a little patience on, take your time, work it slowly as you spin it, and eventually you should be able to get it up through. And of course, I ran my line up. I had enough to run up, you know, right up in here somewhere, pretty close to the top. And then finally, our rear differential vent, which is back here. I ran up the frame. I wanted to keep it away from the exhaust, so I made sure to tie it up nice and high away from it. Ran it around and then drilled a hole and again ran her up to the top of the frame again being careful cutting it at an angle so that I could slowly work it up and twist it and get it to go past where these bolts go through now with all the hoses that I ran up inside the roll cage I want to show you guys what I did with the end now this is an old Jeep trick and I'm sure lots of guys use this on other side-by-sides and ATVs when they're snorkeling and that's to take the the top of the hose is going to be up in the frame. Plug it somehow. I just use the ultra black that I'm using on everything else to make a plug in the end. And then you cut slits like this. And what that does is if water were to happen to get in the roll cage, the water is just going to kind of run down the outside of the hose and drip off instead of running inside the hose. So that's just a little trick there that will help keep the water out of your hose. Now I had debated on relocating the crankcase breather hose here. But if you look at where this is located on the inside, moving it up really isn't going to matter because by the time the water gets up to here, it's already going to be soaking through the bottom of your filter and getting down into your engine anyway. So moving it up is going to be kind of pointless. So I'll probably just seal around the outside here a little better with the ultra black and call it good at that. So again guys, I apologize. This was not the video I had intended it to be. I hope I still gave you a good understanding on how to run your vent lines. It really is simple to do and can be done in an hour and a half, two hours at the most. So hopefully come next video I will have a new camera and the quality will be back up to higher standards. We're going to go ahead and tackle the snorkel on this guy then. Again it's going to be a simple easy design and it'll allow us to go in the deep water or mud without having to... Emily, get out of here. And the kitty is wanting to make sure she is heard on camera. So as always, guys, till then, it doesn't matter what you ride, as long as you ride. So keep on riding. Tell me stop picking my nose. Turn the camera up. No, no, no. I'll take it.